This episode of the Rogue Deck Builder is brought to you by InkPlaymats.com, the official playmat vendor of RogueDeckBuilder.com. Visit InkPlaymats.com for custom playmats, dice bags, and even card sleeves. You can even pick up your own Rogue Deck Builder playmat. InkPlaymats.com. Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with Master Number One with a non-playing on a budget uh, Mono White Heroics. So this is my updated list. We're going to keep it. This is a decent hand with some first turn action into a favorite hoplite. Red decks are usually very, very good. This is going to be a very easy matchup for us. What I think I'm going to do is just chuck out Mr. Lagona. 0-4 is going to be very hard for him to attack through, especially if he puts out two one-drops here. I can still block with Foundry Street uh, Denizen. So this is going to be absorbing. Yeah, this is going to ruin his second turn play. He definitely can attack here, and if he's got a magma... magma uh, Jet or, or uh, whatever the two damage spell is, he can he can kill, but it does not. Yep. So we will go ahead and chuck out the favorite hoplite and pass the turn to him. This is pretty much an auto win. It's very hard for red deck wins to to beat mono white heroics. They just can't. In the, he could be using the nope. It's just it looks like mono red to me. So. The Akron Crusader, I mean, I have no, no worry, I guess, of having to get launched the fleets. Like, like a lot of these decks, when they splash the white, the launch fleet is very powerful. So, see what he ends up doing here. Just a Fire Drinker Crusader, yeah, I mean, he's, he's definitely blitzing here. And if he casts a spell, I can have two things that can't block. But next turn, I think I will just put out the Seeker of the Way. And just completely solidify this win. So we can go... Yeah, we can go Radiant Fountain here. And then we can Seeker. And he has to have some really amazing cards here to get through this. I mean, he can target the Arena Athlete and make something not block. With Frenzy Goblin, he can make something not block. But with a, a Johnny's Presence on whatever he doesn't... Block. I mean, that's going to draw him a card, right? Is that what it does? No, it gives it haste. Okay. So it's not as powerful as a Dragon's Mantle. And it goes to Seeker Can't Block. That's that's fine. I'm killing... I'm definitely killing the Frenzied Goblin here. Alright, so why is he getting... Oh! Oh! Okay! Yeah, none of my guys are going to be able to block. Until I... No, but Johnny's Presence doesn't even give him protection from color. So he's going to... He's going to be able to do some significant amount of damage here. By not making my Laguna Band Trailblazer be able to block either. By attacking in with Frenzied Goblin. But this is the only turn this is going to work. And next turn I feed a resistance to make sure that it goes as planned. And I might actually even attack with Seeker. Because I'm taking 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, probably 9 damage with Fire Drinker. Yep. So I'm down to 13, but still that's... Nothing with the Seeker. We have double Seekers now, actually. But I'm just going to Defiant Strike this Seeker. Because I want some lifelink. Here. And I could play that, but I'm just going to play... I'm just going to keep up the Feet of Resistance, or... No, I'm going to cast another Seeker. This kind of negates that swing. Back up to a 17. And we'll put out the other Seeker. So now he's got to draw into something that actually triggers off the Arena Athlete. Or... And still, he won't even be able to do enough damage. We don't have the Feet of Resistance. We have a Johnny's Presence. And he's just wanting to trigger off... See how we do this here. Okay, I'm going to block, block, and block. We're going to block with everything here. See what he wants to do. How he orders these. Show us the order. So he's going to go for Seeker first. So I will... 
A giant's presence a seeker. Fine, that's fine. Now he's got to use that last spell, if he's got a last spell. To take out the Seeker. And, yep, he just, he concedes. He knows he's going to lose that. I gain a ton of life. He loses his Fire Drinker Seder. And then eventually the Feeder Resistance are just going to sue to win this game. So you didn't get to see the, the non-budget stuff that I put into this. But, like, Hushman Griffin, and Ord Ordea of Hilo is definitely going to come in. We don't need Devour of Light. I love Bramaz, another Bramaz. Um, so, we can take out the weaker cards in this. Like, the Akron Sky Guard is quite weak in this matchup. And even the Fabled Hero is not necessary because we're, we're, we're bringing in... We'll just keep the one Fabled Hero. If we have it, we have it. So, well, this kind of takes us low into the... I think, actually, Launch the Fleets are kind of weak here. And we'll bring in, I want 20 creatures to block. So we'll keep in just one launch. And this looks pretty good against him. Because now we bring in the Dawnbreaker Charioteers. We bring in another Bramaz. It can be very difficult for him to deal with. And yeah, launch the fleets. Absolutely do not need to be in here. So just going to submit this. And you know what? This is actually a keepable hand with the, on the draw. As we do have the favorite hoplite. But he does have a Founder Street Denizen. And I hope he just goes for a creature because I won't do anything. I hope he doesn't actually shoot down his favorite hoplite. Otherwise, it could lose because. Okay, this is kind of. That was kind of a stupid keep on my part now because I think what I have to do is Defiant Strike his Founder Street Denizen next turn just to draw a card. To try to find another land. So I can't I can't miss another land. So that does hurt. And there's a God's Willing. Yep, I have to find strike this to try to hit something. And we miss it. So my greedy keep actually is going to lose this game. As I miss my land drops. And now I'm going to get blitzed out. Not only that, but I miss any sort of two drop as well. So looking pretty bad. There's finally my... My... Uh, Second drop, but I mean, I'm so far away from casting anything. So, dumb keep on my part. I could put an ordeal of Heliod on his own guy to try to gain some life, but that just seems silly. And I'm sure he's got removal, removal, removal. So, best thing I can draw into is actually a Radiant Fountain next turn. Or, uh, actually, Favorite Hoplite or Logona would be the best thing I could draw into. So, give me a Defiant Strike. We're just going to use it. And we miss again. So, I can't do anything here. So, I'm going to have to drop a launch the fleet. And we're just going to lose. As I'm down to 12. I'm still... You know what? A Lagona kind of gets us back in this. He's looking a little bit flooded, which is the good news. He's only doing 2 damage per turn. But you got to think that he's got plenty of removal in his hand. And at this point, yeah, another land doesn't... A land helps us, but Seeker's just going to die. I just got to wait for another another card to put out the Seeker. So I think at this point we just get rid of this Dawnbreaker Charioteer, even though it does get us back into this. But I'm not going to be able to cast it forever. So turn six, so we've drawn six cards off draws and two off defiant strikes, and only one um, land off of eight draws, so that's pretty unlucky. But I did keep a very extremely greedy hand. And wow, yep, yeah, he can pump the pump that guy like crazy with the dragon's mantle. Which he decides not to do, which is unless he's doing it right here, okay. Three cards still left in his hand. I go down to a three. If he has any sort of lightning strike, I'm done. I have to draw a land here. Okay, perfect. So we do draw the land. But if he has any sort of searing blood... You know, lightning strike, so will this God's, God's willing? And see if he's got another lightning strike. If he lets this resolve, he dies. 
Wow. So pro red, he can't put that on top. That's fine. Oh, he lightning striked me. Oh, I didn't even notice that. That is lightning striking on the seeker. So, okay, that was just that was just bad news on my part. We'll submit this, and I won't keep such a greedy of a hand. All right, yes, we like to play first. What you want to do against an aggro deck? This is a great hand versus him. I wish we had more white. Actually, this isn't even that great of a hand, but I'll keep it. We have three lands. We can cast most stuff, and that first turn, Lagona is really, really hard for him. Because this just puts a huge card that can block forever. I mean, he's going with his his best draw. Okay, there's the second there's the second uh, white. So I will put favorite hoplite out. If it gets searing blooded, it gets searing blooded. But Bermaz gonna be hard for him to deal with. And two life from the radiant fountain. There's a Defiant Strike. I think I'll just Radiant Fountain here. And instead of Defiant Striking, we will Bermaz. Again, that's going to be extremely hard for him to deal with. Yep, that's fine. He Lightning Strikes off a of Favorite Hoplite. Now that's going to be even be harder for him to deal with by not having double ways to kill Bermaz. See if a third one drop comes out. He's gonna okay. He's gonna stoke Bramaz. Okay, so he's down to two cards though, and I've stabilized. Um, I think what we do here is we just pull out the Hoplite or Hero, and again, it's something he's got to deal with. Plus, we have a Defiant Strike to pump up either one of them. But now we're drawing into too many lands. We have the Defiant Strike that pretty much can get my Lagona out of range. Dragon's Mantle on the Arena Athlete, making the favorite Hoplite not able, or the Fabled Hero not be able to block, and draws him a card. So here I think I'll take out his prowess guy. He does have one mana, but I think that's the, the smarter No, he's a three. We do not definitely want to do it. don't do that. So we take out the Foundry Sheet Denizen. Or Foundry Yes, Foundry Sheet Denizen. And we need to draw into something besides that is the perfect draw of all perfect draws. And start attacking you with the the hero. He's got two cards in hand. I've got a 1-5 blocker. Hall of Triumph's okay. But he's got to decide what he wants to do here. He does nothing. That's that's the wrong move. He should have attacked him. The only way he's going to get me is to is to try to attack down. So again, we'll Seeker. Attacking with the Fabled Hero. Keep swinging in for four. He's down to a 12. We're, we're a little bit away from just swinging in with one card to be able to kill him.
And he gets another Dragon Mail. That's a very powerful draw, actually. So I get God's Willing here. Pro Red. Now, I don't even care right here. I, I'm going to use God's Willing in response to... He has another card, though. That Dragon's Mantles. Those are pretty good cards. He does have three mana. Yeah, I don't think he can do anything with three mana. I think we just kill off the arena athlete. It's being obnoxious. So we go to blocks here. And this will force him to pump it. Response to his last pump. Will God's willing it? Put that on top. Great card. And I'm only taking five here. He's down to one card. He's losing his best arena athlete. Um, Searing Blood where? Oh, that hurts. That actually does hurt. But he loses guy. We're just back to defensive mode now. Which, again, is kind of annoying. I think I'll just get in here with the Seeker. Yeah, it's fine. And then now he's got to draw into stuff that actually progresses his board. Which, Dragon Mantle is the best card he can draw into. And he's already got... Oh, jeez. Well, he's already got through two. He won't draw another one. He, he proceeds to draw into another one. Lame. But let's see on the backswing can actually kill him. He's got one card in hand again. So I go to the block. And we take out the, the, the Crusader. Okay. It's up to a 3-2. And up to a 4-2. 5-2. 5-2. And 6-2, and that's when we give the feeder resistance. Pro red. Kill that off. We are down to a 7. I do think I need to sit back now. No, we're going to Defiant Strike on the, the Seeker to put us back up to nice little life totals. That's a nice top deck. And... Yeah, we'll just do this. Which will be death. That works. Swinging in for 11 and gaining a gazillion life in the process. So there you have it. Red deck wins is an absolute joke for this deck to try to beat. Uh, he had a pretty good draw there. Plenty of lands for... Um, what he needed to do, I think he had a pretty fairly even land drops per creature. I mean, I think this is what statistically what his deck wants to do, going through 43 of his cards in 5. Yeah, if he's run a 20-card deck, that's one-fourth his, his, his lands, and he's gone through almost one-fourth his deck. So that's going to be a pretty accurate draw for Mono Red. And same thing with us, we drew 4, 5, 6. Yeah, we, we, we drew a little heavy on the land side, so... Anywho... Hope you enjoyed this matchup. We'll play a few more with the updated Heroic. This is, again, this is the deck that I am, am most comfortable with. I'm really loving this deck in the metagame. I'll try some new decks in the future. Again, I hope you guys don't get bored with a lot of the redundancy. I have a reanimator deck coming up as soon as I can afford the tickets to uh, um, brew some new decks. So if you guys are interested in new decks, please, please, please use that. Click on that donate button or buy some playmats or whatnot. We are really strapped for cash. I've put a lot into trying to investing into the new studio 
and getting that all ready. We've got it painted. We've got we had to buy some mortar for it. We had to uh, to fix up some walls and and whatnot. And those expenses, you know, do cut into the fun of brewing in a new deck. So if you enjoy new brews, definitely ship some uh, support on the Rogue Deck Builder way. This is Ken with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.